I must say that listening since this morning to the presentations, discussions, it's very painful for me to go through this again because it's like a repeat of the same show, same film. We were here in the 80s fighting an apartheid system. We used to come and appear before the UN. And uh, the same countries that are involved are still the same countries today. Um, the United States, Britain, France, and Western countries supported the apartheid system fully. They also gave them capacity of nuclear weapons chemical weapons, some of which were used against us. And, and my presentation is about how we would put pressure on these governments to stop supporting apartheid Israel, settler colonialism in, in Israel, in the same way we did with South Africa. We didn't start with people supporting South Africa. We ended with them doing so. It's not out of conversion or changing their minds. It's by force. So we're not going to have them changing their minds. We're going to have to actually put pressure on them. So I want to say in a point form, for one who, has, who was and has lived through a neocolonial racist apartheid society, when I visited Palestine, Israel, and I will call it like that for purposes of this presentation, for the first time in 1988, um, I was actually um, asked by a Jewish rabbi to go there and see both sides. And I spent two days with the Israelis, two days with the Palestinians, and I came out there convinced that what I saw there in 1988 was worse than what we're experiencing in South Africa at the height of the apartheid system in South Africa. And, and I could not miss the fact that this is a settler colonial apartheid system. And I do elaborate in the paper. In terms of the later evidence, Jewish national state law, I read it. You can't miss clear apartheid, it's not discrimination and except. you don't need a, a, an education about that. And then uh, during the latter visit in 2022, we went to Sheikh Jarrah, met Palestinians who were driven out of um, um, various parts of Israel during 1948 they still had keys for their houses and want to go back home. But an, a Jewish person can live from any part of the world, arrive there and claim the land where they are, and the law permitted that. But the Palestinian was removed in 1948, can't do the same. And that can prove apartheid racism more than uh, that would be. So I just want to say that uh, to make the points, um, I'm still shocked that the world has allowed such a racist apartheid system to continue after declaring apartheid a crime against humanity. The UN made that declaration. Uh, secondly, it is still shocking that the world could allow Palestinians to be illegally occupied for about 57 years. I like uh, the way Sorani put it. Uh, the second version, the older, the, the longer version is 75 years, and that you could blockade Gaza for 16 years and expect them to do nothing. And I just want to say, if we try to blockade the United States today, you will see hell. <laughs> they will not allow it. And there will be no talk of terrorism. It will be we defending ourselves. And, and I think the world has bought into this logic that doesn't make sense, that you blockade people and you don't expect them to do anything about it. I want to say, I uh, met some of the detainees who came out of detention lately. 
one as one who has been detained for a long time, tortured, etc. I can imagine how all those people who were captured in Gaza were treated. And there is no world to monitor what is happening there. And, and, and that is unbelievable that the world can allow that. And I just want to say, um, as, as what I would like to propose as a solution, is that unless we drill down to the real problem, we will not be able to solve this problem. We'll make speeches, we'll talk, nothing will happen. We'll have a conference like this and nothing happens afterwards. I am convinced the problem starts from the beginning. It's the Balfour Declaration, 1970. It's the Nakba in 19, uh, 1948. It's the resolution of the UN that partitioned Palestine. And once you partitioned it, and you only established one of the states, the others don't have a state, and you empowered that state, empowered them, armed them to the teeth, but there's no Palestinian state, even if you disagreed with the partitioning. But at least they should have had a Palestinian state in the same way they had the Israeli state. They did not do that. The also agreements came, they were adopted, but nothing happened as well. So resolutions of the UN don't work. And so what we have done, and I want to sum it up in this way, is that we have allowed the Israel to be emboldened to pursue the Zionist project. And the Zionist project is expressed clearly, much more clearly, by Bezalel Smotrich, the current finance minister in the cabinet of Israel, who says in his paper, either Israel, Palestinians submit or they leave or they die. There are three options for Palestinians. You leave, and that's why they're pushing them to the boil, to leave Gaza so they can take over, to brutalize them in West Bank, so they can take over. That's fulfilling the Nakba <coughs> as it was envisaged. And, and because of that, uh, the world has allowed them, because of failure of the world, it has allowed them to do this right in front of the world, publicly seen, killing kids, and, and if any of what is happening in Gaza would happen in any of the Western countries today, there will be hell. They will not allow 30,000 people to be killed uh, in the manner in which the Palestinians are killed. And, I, and my conclusion is that this can only be people who think in settler, colonial, racist, apartheid way because Palestinians are not human beings. You have to have that view. It's like dealing with slaves during slavery, during the colonization. There were many genocides the colonialists committed in this world. They are not even recorded because they didn't treat people as human beings. And I just want to conclude um, our chair by saying three things that firstly, you had to have a racist settler colonial mind to establish a settler colonial system at the time when colonialization was coming to an end. 1948, it was the time when it was coming to an end, but they established one at that point. Secondly, brutalizing Palestinians in the way it's being done, it's simply say racist. We shouldn't even beat about the bush. You you have to think they are not human beings to do what is being done. And I just want to say the reverse part of it is that the Israelis are being brutalized themselves and traumatized. There's no soldier who will kill so many children and be normal after. And so you will see the Israeli society is going to be reinvented to be something else 
that doesn't think it is anything wrong in killing so many children. Um, and I just want to say our plan, um, uh, and I don't want to say it's South African, we're asked by the Palestinians to host that conference. And our plan is to invite, we have done so already, we are inviting civil society worldwide, all the continents of the world, to meet in South Africa in May 10 to 12. That date is fixed. And we want to come together to strategize on how we do what the anti-apartheid movement did for South Africa, a global movement, um, and force the states to do what they are supposed to do. And I'm convinced that we did it with South Africa. The United States would not sub support us until we put them under pressure through their citizens to be able to adopt the, the sanctions resolution uh, against apartheid South Africa, the same with the other governments. And I'm convinced that waiting for the states to change will not achieve anything. It is us who should do it. Lastly, I would like to say that history has shown that no empire lasts forever. Read history and that those who have power must know that power does come to an end. That if one has power, one must use it circumspectly for the good of humanity, rather than for self-interest, because it will turn against them in future. Thank you.